Good evening. In accordance with Section 5 of the Open Public Meetings Act, be advised that a notice of this meeting was made by posting on the bulletin board in town hall and forwarding to the officially designated newspapers that this meeting would take place at town hall at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, March 7, 2023. Meeting details and the draft agenda were also posted on our township website. Please all stand to salute the flag. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which he stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cohen? Here. Ms. Prufus? Here. Ms. Romano? Here. Deputy Mayor Vinayak? Here. Mayor Miggins? Here. Thank you. May I have a motion to approve the agenda? Second. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Arizidi? Yes. Thank you, Mayor. I wanted to uh, revisit the issue of the approval of minutes. We talked about that in the past, and I held off on asking you to consider the approval of the minutes for the meetings uh, at the end of the year. And the reason for that was because due to the replacement of two members of the council in the absence of someone else, we did not have uh, a a majority who were present uh, as members of the township committee at that time. So I thought this was an easy question to resolve, did some research, found it's not. <laughs> Consulted uh, 40 uh, municipal attorneys online. There were a variety of uh, reactions. Nobody had a clear cut definitive <clears throat> response. So I came up with a thought and that is I asked if uh, the newly elected committee persons were actually in attendance at the, on those meeting nights, and they were. And so they have signed certifications. Uh, Annette Romano and uh, Michael Cohen have signed certifications uh, that indicate that they were at the, the entire portion of those meetings. And on that basis, it's, uh, it's my opinion that they may vote to approve those meeting, those minutes. I ask also, that the certifications that they each sign be placed in the minutes of this meeting. Can I have a question about that. Would that hold true that if they weren't there but watched, like in the future, if this were to ever happen, if they were to watch the TC meeting because it's recorded, could that hold true? That too? could hold true, and I was going there next. Uh, but that would require having. Uh, uh, imposing a burden of sitting through a two or three hour video of the meeting. And so this is an easier way to do it. Maybe that could happen. But it could, it's another avenue. Yes, we want to document that the entire meeting was watched and, and so on, but this is the easier way. Yeah. I always look for the easier answer. Mr. Marzi, I think that's what I did when I took over a little over two years ago. I yeah. joined planning board. And there were a few meetings that had gone in the planning board before I joined Yes. Um, for the case that continued to be on after I joined the board. So I had to go over those meetings. I went over those, I think, two or three meetings, three, three I'm, hours each. I'm glad you mentioned that. There's a specific provision in the municipal land use law that covers that situation. Okay. We're in a different uh, meeting <laughs> environment here. So I couldn't use that. I thought about it, talked about it, but came up with this instead. Thank you all, both for attending those meetings. So then we will just list them separately? Yes, yeah, so I think you should list them separately. Okay. <clears throat> May I have a motion to approve the October 18th, 2022 Township Committee Minutes? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any abstentions? May I have a motion to approve the November 14th, 2022 Township Committee minutes? Just a moment. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any I'm abstentions? abstaining. You're abstaining. I'm okay. abstaining. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the December 6, 2022 Township Committee minutes? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I abstain. And Sanjeev abstains. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the December 16th Township <coughs> Committee minutes? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? May I have a motion to approve the December 20th, 2022 Township Committee minutes? So moved. May I have a second? Second. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Abs abstain. Tara abstains. Okay. May I have a motion to approve the December 21st, 2022 Township Committee <clears throat> minutes? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any, any opposed? Any abstentions? A quick question. Sorry. Yeah. But going back to the 16th. December? Yeah. yeah. Um, Annette moved it, but can you move it if you weren't there? Uh, yes, I would say on the same basis that she can vote to approve. No, no, she didn't vote. She, I mean, she just oh, moved I'm it sorry. instead of Sanjeev moving it. December 6th? December 16th. 16th. Yeah, I mean, she was. December 16th. Yeah. Uh, she was at that meeting. Okay, got it. I, yeah. it. I was just like on here on our thing. You're looking at that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay. There we go with the minutes. Yes. Okay. Proclamation for Arbor Day. Michael Cullen, you are to present proclamation to our forester, Stacy Phelps. So, <clears throat> proclamation, whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees, and whereas trees reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife, and whereas trees are a renewable resource giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products, and whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and beautify our community, and whereas trees, when they, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal, and whereas the Township of Milburn has been recognized as a tree city USA by the National Arbor Day Foundation and desires to continue its tree planting practices, now therefore be it resolved that the Township Committee of the Township of Milburn in the County of Essex, State of New Jersey, do hereby proclaim April 28, 2023, as Arbor Day and urge all citizens to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands and to support our township's urban forestry program. Signed by Maggie Miggins, Milburn Township Mayor. Um, reports. We're going to ask everyone to please provide reports. Do you have any reports, Ms. Lucas? Yes, the two way we met. And Alex, you were just what, what, the concept plan. Uh, um, yeah, we're, we were going to check to see what exactly was in the scope. Yep. Yeah. And we are, and we are also going back to a few members that weren't able to make that meeting um, to make sure that they uh, they had an opportunity to ask their questions about the two way um, traffic impact study. Um, but the next step is to uh, develop a uh, base conceptual plan of the intersections, um, and then uh, following that, come to the town committee and then public outreach. Right, and I think we, if if we can set it up that. The TC can even see it prior to Kyle Lair is coming in and explaining it. So everybody has some time to digest it before the public presentation. Yeah, yeah we discussed about uh, them. That concept plan was already approved by TC for them to do it last year. 
And they were going to make that concept plan and do the information session. And that's what we discussed to actually have TC fill in before the information session happens. Right. Sorry. So probably in the next, at the end of the month or in April, So we'll see the report then in April? Yes. Okay. So a report and also and, and the, the and presentation the or information <clears throat> that they're going to share right. with public. And okay. maybe even at the end of March. Perfect. Yep. Thank you. It's exciting. Mr. Collin? Yeah, um, I would like to publicize three events that are being um, put on by the Friends of the Memorial Library um, on Tuesday, March 28th. They're holding Spring Museum Night, which with the, uh, the, the presentation being Beyond the Pearl Earring, new insights into the work of Johannes Vermeer. Uh, on April 10th is the next meeting of the Fireside Book Club. The book is the, that they're going to discuss is Lessons in Chemistry by Marnie Garmus. That's a virtual meeting, so um, that's available on Zoom. And then finally, the annual book sale will be held on Saturday, May 6th from 9.30 to 5, and Sunday, May 7th from 1 to 4.30. Um, they're accepting books between April 10th and April 23rd at the library. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Benai, Deputy Mayor Benai. Yes, Mayor. So other than two-way traffic, um, I also attended Pedestrian Safety Advisory Board uh, meeting. I'm liaison too. Uh, we have actually changed the setting now to have that meeting monthly, uh, at least through June, before the summer vacation starts, since there are some school people also on that meeting. So we'll be meeting every second Tuesday of the month, uh, 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be reviewing or we are reviewing SDL portal uh, request for the last six months. So if you have anything related to pedestrian safety that you think will be good for the township, I suggest you use that SDL portal and put in your request because uh, at least I plan to use that for pushing some of those things ahead with the team that is very well versed on the pedestrian safety board. Uh, then we also are looking at traffic incident uh, data to, and, and that may have already been done in the past. I'm not too sure, I'm new on this meeting. So we are reviewing those incident uh, where they had happened to, I mean, proactively come up with potential solution if they're not already been evaluated yet. Other than pedestrian safety advisory board, there's also flood mitigation advisory meeting that I'm uh, part of. Uh, we had internal meeting uh, last two weeks and we have another one tomorrow. Next week, Wednesday, uh, we have public session for more than likely it'll be South Mountain and Wyoming uh, because they all are associated with East Branch. So more information about how the East Branch is flowing and uh, what those potential solution could be while hearing from the residents of those areas uh, will be conducted in person uh, next week. And you can see this on our website uh, on the flood mitigation page. Uh, the, the dates are given. If you have any questions, please reach out to the administration. Last but not the least, we are, I'm a part of finance subcommittee uh, and we discussed 2022 actuals and also 2023 budgets. Uh, we, we are probably one of the percentage wise lower on the taxes uh, in the state of New Jersey. There are about 600 towns. We're probably, I think our position is somewhere between 500 something on the percentage of the taxes. But in the entire state of New Jersey, I ran a report. Our population is about 22,000 people. And I ran from 19,000 to 25,000 population. Dollar wise, our operating cost, our operation budget is the highest. There are about 40 towns in there. So we, we have a long way to go. Uh, so percentage wise, it may look, uh, we are great. And in Essex County, we are the lowest on the percentage wise. But as I said, dollar wise in the state of New Jersey, 
So we are working with a high uh, budget. And last two years, we did not raise taxes. And this year, again, we are looking at a nominal increase. Uh, I'm actually going to the other side and been talking to administration here uh, to look into the spending that we do internally here, how we can make it more efficient <clears throat> So we can we can be a little bit lower on the dollar wise as well. Uh, we have to start somewhere. Uh, some of the things that we are looked at again, I'm not sure how far it'll go. Um, some efficiencies projects could be the car fleet that we have, the courthouse that we have. Uh, we use eight more than eighty percent is used. Again, I'm not saying everybody's on board on this. It's just uh, what I see or what I'm looking at is courthouse that we use is more than 80% is used by the shoplifters from the mall. A mall uses that resource. If we have a joint court, like the governor has been working on for all the small towns, we can join the joint, joint court. We'll get better infrastructure, bigger infrastructure with the lower cost. Again, uh, these are some of the things that we can look into and work towards. Uh, making our, our spend more efficient. So I, I believe we can work in those directions. There are a few other things that uh, I think it could be workable, but again, these are a few things that in sub-finance committee we have been discussing. That doesn't mean it's happening. So thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ms. Ma, thank you. Okay, I have some uh, things coming up with Explore Melbourne Short Hills. Um, Explore recently hosted two seminars for local businesses on tax preparation and search engine optimization. The attendance and feedback has been great. The next two classes will focus on customer lifetime value training and will be on March 28th and 30th. Uh, RSVP to marketing at exploremelbourneshorthills.org to attend. For the full schedule, visit the Explore webpage and click on the Events and Program tab. This Thursday at 5, Explore will host its first Merchant Mixer of the Year in partnership with Interior Motif, a new business on Upper Melbourne Avenue. The event will feature high-end supercars on display, an experience, appearance by Scary Jones of Z100 Radio, HGTV stars, and a raffle worth over $12,000. The event is open to all SID businesses. The general public and all elected officials have been invited to make remarks at the event. Explore is launching our first restaurant week between March 20th and 26th. We currently have 30 restaurants signed up to participate. Each will be offering special meals and deals, as well as exciting partnerships between the restaurants, bakeries, and wine shops. To see the full list and menu offerings, visit the Explore website and click on the Restaurant Week tab. A portion of the proceeds will benefit Opportunity Project, which is a local nonprofit supporting brain injured clients. March is Opportunity Project, I'm sorry, March is Brain Injury Awareness Month. And some restaurants have hired members from the club to work on site during the week. Special thanks to planning committee members, including Boxcar Bar and Grill, Common Lot, Milburn Deli, Milburn Standard, Saigon Cafe, and Unwind Boutique. Explore is also recruiting volunteers for townwide litter cleanup from 10 to 12 on April 22nd as part as the, of the founding day event. To volunteer, go to, to the Explore website, <coughs> click on the founding day tab. We are also recruiting, recruiting artists for a sidewalk art show. If you have an artist who would like to display their work, please send an email to steve at exploremilburnshorthills.org. Uh, I also sat on the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee last week. For those residents that don't know, Jamie Hawkins is our Senior Citizen Coordinator. She does an outstanding job of keeping our seniors resident, senior residents busy and informed. Jamie offers a wide variety of activities and programs for our senior residents throughout the year. In addition, a variety of trips also take place. Jamie is also responsible for the township's senior bus that transports seniors throughout the township. Jamie also puts out the senior hotline newsletter every month available online and on the township's website or by regular mail. 
There's also an e-newsletter that goes out approximately twice a month. If you'd like more information, you can reach out to Jamie by email at jhawkins at milburntwp.org or by phone at 973-564-7091. I also met with the local assistance board last week, and I want to acknowledge and thank the residents of Milburn Short Hills that have donated to the pantry, either in food donations and or monetary. We continue to help those residents that experience food insecurities. In addition, we are very lucky and grateful to have Anna Milan, our human services coordinator. For those don't, that don't know, we share her with Livingston. She helps our residents in need apply for different services, whether it be SNAP benefits, Medicaid, general assistance, and other resources. Mm -hmm. Towns that don't have someone like Anna on staff are left to navigate and apply for assistance on their own, often not knowing where to begin. In addition, through the generosity of our residents, we were able to help a refugee family. The family was a single father from Afghanistan and his three children. His wife had died in Afghanistan. They were sponsored by his parents who live here in Milburn. We put an ask out on social media for clothing and within a few short days, the children had brand new clothing and some toys that were donated locally. Anna's contact information is amilan at milburntwp.org and her phone number is 973-535-7961, extension 231. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Mr. McDonald, do you have any reports? Yes, Mayor, thank you. <clears throat> uh, first, I'd like to just touch on the Mayor's Rawway River Coalition. Um, some good news that came about was that the uh, agreement between the DEP and the Army Corps of Engineers has been signed and that the Mayor's Railway River Coalition will be meeting in uh, April, either mid or late April with the Army Corps of Engineers uh, to begin that process. Um, the Mayor's Railway River Coalition has also set up a, uh, a monthly meeting uh, with those mayors that are participating throughout the Railway River Basin. And so that, that group is starting to gain steam uh, in 2023. Um, just a really long heads up to uh, those residents that live in the Martindale Fairfield uh, area uh, that PSE and G will be doing uh, gas main replacement uh, in the month of April, probably more toward the end of April. Um, this is in preparation and ahead of paving um, our part of our 2023 uh, Mill and Pave is going to be Fair, Fairfield Drive. So uh, as we usually do with these types of projects, we ask all of the utilities to look at those streets that were uh, going to be milling and paving and do their work ahead of time. Um, <clears throat> just a, uh, a plug for uh, the rec department. Uh, the pool is still looking for lifeguards. So anybody that has anybody that might be interested in uh, lifeguarding this summer, uh, please uh, reach out to the rec department. We will be putting up the variable message board uh, to alert those who may be passing through Milburn as well, um, that there are opportunities to, to lifeguard at the, the municipal pool. Lastly, uh, I would just like to bring to the public's attention that um, on Tuesday of last week, uh, the borough of New Providence voted to exit the Mountain Valley Emergency Communication Center, which is a joint meeting center of dispatch between Milburn Summit and New Providence. They will be exiting the uh, center at the end of 2023. Um, and so this leaves uh, Milburn and Summit um, to navigate uh, that joint meeting without New Providence. We will certainly be meeting in the, in, in the short weeks here to start discussions with Summit on next steps. Uh, that includes uh, committee person in that Romano, who is the liaison to that board, um, and also um, Mayor Miggins, who will be assisting in that as well. Um, and we will make sure that we keep both the committee and the public apprised uh, of those goings on. Um, and uh, that, uh, that concludes my reports. Mr. Mayor, do you have any reports for us? I do not have any okay. I just have a few things. Um, just Make sure everybody marks their calendar for Memorial Day. We have our parade, so mark your calendars, please. That'll be Monday of Memorial Day. We just like to keep reminding everyone. Um, we will be um, meeting 
uh, Mr. McDonald and myself will be meeting with uh, Mayor Warren and the business administrator from the city of Orange within the next few weeks with the, in terms of the flood mitigation committee. So we're excited about that. Um, we do have some openings on our planning board and our zoning board. So if anyone um, wishes to serve on those boards, please um, um, sign up. Where do we have them sign up, Christine, Ms. Gaddy? They visit our website, they can look up the volunteer interest form and there's a Google form. They can contact the clerk's office for more information. Okay, so, so two very, very, well, all the boards are important, but these are very important boards, planning and zoning. Um, also, um, you know, we, we always have good news and the bad news. The great news was that in February, we didn't have one car theft. That was a beautiful thing. Unfortunately, we had some house thefts. Um, so we have seen a recent uptick and I guess it gets to be a cycle, doesn't it? And so what we're asking everyone in town to do, you're doing such a fabulous job taking your key fobs in your home and, and locking up your doors. Um, but what we're seeing is there's, there's two, di two different thefts as it were. One is where people are leaving their homes unlocked and people are just walking into their homes. And um, so we, we had many conversations with the police chief. So he's, he's, he's suggesting, and I agree with him, just to make sure that, you know, if you're going out, lock your doors, um, make sure your windows on your first floor are all locked. Um, also, uh, we had uh, we did have a break in on a second floor window, which was most upsetting. Um, but there's other agencies that are involved in that. So just so you know that um, they also say consider a ring doorbell camera at the back of your doors. If you have an alarm system, please activate it. Um, you can also register it with the Melbourne Police Department. Um, probably be best not to post on social media and uh, when you're away and let your neighbors know you'll be away. Um, we do, Mr. McDonald, we see, and it's almost like they're checking our calendars, our social calendars here in our town. And so we see a rise in um, home robberies um, when we're away. So I know that's coming up in April that uh, we have another school break. So um, please, oh please, just to make sure that you're locking everything up and uh, um, especially your um, the doors. That's a, a few of these last, uh, home burglaries, they just walked right into the person's home, the doors were left unlocked. Um, so that is that. Um, that's all for me. Okay. Oh, no, I apologize. The compliance hearing. Um, the compliance hearing, the one snowstorm we get is the day we're supposed to have our compliance hearing with the courts. Um, so the Attorney, uh, Mr. Cantor has requested a date change for uh, the date that had been set by the courts. We have no control over that, um, but it falls on um, Thursday, Pass we have Passover, we have uh, Holy Thursday, there's um, many things going on. So I, um, there's school breaks. So I know Mr. Uh, Cantor has requested a date change on the compliance hearing as soon as we know that and we hear from the courts, you'll hear that from us as well. It'll go out um, on the mayor's message and it'll also go out on our social media. The minute we have the date, we just don't have it yet. Those are my reports. Public comment. No? Oh, I apologize, you're right. Mr. Jesse, I'm so sorry about that. You have a Milburn Township's SDL portal. You're gonna give an overview? Thanks, Mr. Molman. So on the home page of the township website, the far left hand side of the screen, there is a file a concern link. And that brings you to our SDL portal. Um, residents can use the SDL portal without logging in. Um, they can provide their comments and also filter their complaint based on the issue. Um, we have a wide variety of concerns that people could choose from. Um, these concerns get routed directly to the department. So it's best that people just take a look and make sure they're sorting things correctly. And then residents are also updated as that complaint is moved from a reviewed and pending phase to complete. Um, in addition, when you're on the SEO portal, if you choose to create a login, you can go to the maps link at the top of the page 
um, and it includes uh, a full map with a uh, block and lot um, breakout of the township, as well as layers on the left hand side for things like FEMA maps, um, zoning, and things of that nature. And that's the STL portal. Yeah, again, this is a uh, this is a, a good tool um, for residents to utilize. Uh, it helps us also keep things organized and be able to uh, track complaints, track data, different things like that. Some of these various categories do fall in a general nature, um, and those will be routed to administration. Um, also, um, you know, most of these are turned around very quickly. There are some that do um, do take a while. In particular, we've seen a lot of requests for streetlights. Um, Generally speaking, residents can report those streetlight outages to uh, JCPNL, who is our electric provider. Uh, but but certainly, if you put it in here, we will also uh, do our best to dispose of it. Um, but this is a really useful tool. Again, if you're looking at your property, you want to see if you still have any outstanding permits or permits open. You can go to your particular property and look at what permits were taken out um, and uh, and whether they've been closed. Or um, you can look at you know storm sewer system in your area, things like that. There's many layers on on this GIS, um, and certainly it's a it's a it's a useful tool to our residents. So uh, we encourage everybody, uh, especially if you're thinking of a concern or uh, uh, you know a complaint about something, uh, to utilize this portal. So I have a comment and a question based on STL. So one is, this is actually a, indeed a very good tool when you put something in there. It goes through the department and day-to-day -day work is done by the administration, uh, not these five members. But if you give us that, you have put it in there and give that a reference number, we can follow up with our administration of as to what's going on in that. Now, secondly, I want to make sure, does this give answer to the resident what route has been taking or is it completed yet or not? Does do all people hear back from you or some gets to hear back and some not? So the direction to the department heads is that they should um, go through these concerns in a timely manner and that um, they are to provide a written response in the box that goes back to the resident via email. Um, and so if a resident has a concern that that hasn't happened, they can definitely reach out to the administration and we'll follow up. So another one is, if you haven't gotten a response, put another concern and say you have not gotten a response back on that reference number. I think that is even more important. That is reinforcing everyone to respond back to the resident. And it's, it's everybody who's working here are busy, are human being, and they may miss it. But it is just that if it falls within the process, it will get taken care of versus ad hoc calling up and asking. And there, there are some complaints that are much easier to fill in short order than others, like potholes, DPW gets it, and depending on season and their schedule, they could be out within the day or within that week. Um, and then there's some that are more complicated that may remain stacked for a little bit, uh, but for the most part, um, you know, if that happens, definitely feel free to reach out to the department directly <laughs> or um, reach out to the administration and we'll follow up. Is there a way that they can log in and see where the complaint is at? Or is there a process that you will update them every one week or week and a half or whatever that is? So they get an email received from STL when they file the complaint and they get subsequent updates every time it's gone from a different phase in the process to being reviewed or in a pending phase to being completed. And if they log in with an account in STL, they can see that status as well. Okay, thank you. But the point is you don't have to have an account to make that complaint or, yeah. or request mm -hmm. but the more information residents share the better so as you go down the page um, it's best to include a location so that we know where the issue is um, and uh, and things of that nature people can upload pictures as well to help solidify the location i have used this stl and we went through the same presentation about two years ago uh, but it's always good to remind everyone and reinstate this it is a very good tool that process can be followed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Public comment. When invited to speak, please come to the lectern. Clearly state your name and whether you are a Melbourne resident, property owner, and or business owner, 
and speak loudly so that your comments may be understood by all and properly recorded. Please do not provide your full address, seeing our meetings are recorded and are readily available to the public. For the convenience of our community, there is a remote option available. If you called in and would like to comment, please press star six now. And if you are attending by computer or electronic device, please click the raise hand button. All members of the public wishing to speak will be put into the queue to address the committee. Whenever an audience or committee member reads verbatim from a prepared statement, please email a copy to the township's clerk's office at townclerk at milburntwp.org. To help facilitate an orderly meeting and to permit all to be heard, speakers are asked to limit their comments to one three minute session. You will be prompted when there are 30 seconds remaining. Each individual will be given one opportunity to make their public comment. Please be patient and we will address each member of the public that wishes to speak. This is a business meeting and please do not address professionals or staff directly and please do direct all your comments to me. A reminder that we are all neighbors and personal attacks will not be tolerated. I will now open the public comment period. Um. Good evening, my name is Jeffrey Feld. Um, I am a public citizen. Um, I applaud all residents who have attended the various public forums, whether it was the Board of Education or last week's um, Part 3 Rec Department presentation. Um, at the last Thursday, something happened that was odd. The Rec Commission's chairman, Nick Romano, publicly agreed with me. And there seemed to have been a backtracking by the administration as to the importance of civic participation. And with that, I refer everyone to a, a state Supreme Court case that came out of Massachusetts, which spanked a municipality for violating the Open Public Meetings Act of that community and violating the constitutional rights of a Massachusetts citizen. With that, I wanna to turn to the bill list. Um, you're talking about financial savings. You might want to look at the monthly retainers payment that increased from $10,000 to $20,000 to the municipal attorney. Because when I make my OPA request, the time that's for the, the monies that go through the retainer, I can't determine how many hours have been spent. So there might be a windfall to our municipal attorney. Um, again, at the last meeting, I talked about why names and street addresses have been omitted regarding the tax appeals. And last time we heard about Daniel's law, Daniel's law does not apply to residents. It only applies to people that are in right now, police enforcement or judges. And I think, I think we're entitled for an explanation as to that. As to the memorandum of understanding with Essex County, I think last year we approved a similar type of a resolution. I don't know if it's different or is it different areas, but it seems to be the same thing we did when we started the program. And I just like clarification. Uh, as to 23085, with all due respect to this gentleman regarding a change order, increasing the amount of his retention, I think we should take a pause on that. I think we should be knowing how much money he's expending so far to date, why he needs, why there is such an urgency to increase this change order for these services. So I have a feeling these mounts, these monies go to nine Main Street. And that ties back to what we started talking about civic participation. That last Thursday, there was a recognition of the importance of robust informed civic participation. And I've been always been talking about nine Main Street of being the square peg in a round hole. How do you sell a piece of property for a dollar if you don't have a redevelopment plan? Do you need a public auction? And I think we need a timeout. And I think we need to have that pu promised public forum on that. Finally, as to Oprah, I sent you various, your last Oprah response to it. There's a difference between a duty to investigate your files, produce a written document, and a duty to create a report. When I ask for a written government record, you have an obligation to search for it. You all have the response that came to me. And I re refer you back to what happened today in Massachusetts. It also came back in here. We should have had that settlement as the fair share housing on July 30th. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Feld. Good 
Good evening, Jay Morielli, uh, resident and property owner. Um, kudos to the TC Rec Department and Mr. McDonald uh, for giving residents a chance to speak on the issue of the sports fields and the PAR-3 before committing thousands of dollars to perform a feasibility study. From the presentation and public comments, two things seem clear. One, there is a need for more fields as youth participation is at an all-time high. And two, that residents want to see more than just the unanimous rec commission decision on the solution. I think investigating turfing of fields already on BOE property that would make them more playable and offer more playing hours is a great idea. Mayor Echo mentioned a proposal that was made to do just that. Would that be available to the public? Also, um, I'd be interested in hearing why solutions like buying or leasing land from NJ Water or East Orange are not feasible. We already know that NJ Water is selling land in a conservation area to a developer. So would the township consider buying land for rec fields? East Orange, for example, according to online property records has, in addition to the 165 acre golf course, another 450 <coughs> acres of land in Milburn Township. This land has an assessed value of approximately seven and a half million dollars. Even 2% of that nine acres <coughs> would be more than enough space for the three or four fields that are needed. If the assessed value is anywhere near the real value of the land, that would be $150,000 for nine acres. If, if they are not willing to sell it for that, what are they willing to sell it for? And if they, if they ask a price that is beyond our means, should that be what the assessed value of the land is? And should we charge a tax rate based on that value? Solar panels have been installed on approximately 20 acres of this land. If solar panels can be built there, I suspect playing fields can be built there as well. What is New Jersey Water selling eight acres of their land to Woodmont for? What was the assessed value there? Is it less than the 10 million proposed to replace the par three? In short, let's explore purchase or lease options for fields and can keep and continue to keep the public engaged. Oh, and kudos, Mr. Vinayak, for your comments on the taxes, um, because the tax rates are really irrelevant. It's what people pay. It's what the dollars are that pay and what we get for those dollars. I think um, nobody would have um, a complaint if we knew that we were paying more, but getting more. So equating what are we getting for the tax dollars that we pay I think is really critical. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mariano. <clears throat> Jean Pasternak, resident. Uh, it seems there have been changes to the agendas um, of our land use boards at the last minute, the last uh, couple of meetings. Um, residents are not informed until the last minute. An example was the Annie Says application. Uh, I'm aware, I'm sure you are, that there were residents who wished to attend and have uh, a say with that particular application, but it was pulled and people really didn't know about it until the last minute. So it, it just inconveniences people who might have planned to be there. And I think it would just be um, more respectful of our residents if we could be informed sooner about those changes. Um, also, I know Mayor Megans, you mentioned the uh, Memorial Day Parade. Could you describe or someone describe what the process is to participate for the Milburn groups? Um, and I have a question about the publication of the RFP for engineering services for the relocation of various public works <coughs> assets uh, for a contractor, basically, I guess, to move parts of the, what we call the dump. Um, like, so where where is this emanating from, which part of, you know, township uh, governance is, is responsible for this and who gave the order to um, issue the RFP. Um, I also have a comment about what Mr. Committeeman Vignac talked about regarding taxes. Uh, I know you mentioned the word nominal increase in taxes, uh, and you also spoke about re-examining expense reductions and efficiencies, which is always a good thing to do. We should do it every year. 
Um, have you also discussed any additional taxes that residents could be subjected to? I know there was a rumor about um, trash and uh, uh, recycling being charged to residents. Is there any truth to that? And I know in this body, there was some talk about an open air tax. So I just wondered if you had any comment about that. Um, the other thing I'd like to add to what I guess Jeff said is if there hasn't yet been a fair share uh, form organized. I know, Alex, you said it was difficult because there are a lot of different people involved, professionals. But at this point, I mean, we've had a long time to get that together. You saw the turnout at the PAR 3. We really want to have that as a public um you know, as a public forum, it really yields some, you heard these amazing, great ideas that came from our residents. I think it's, we deserve to have that. And I'd just like to understand what's taking so long and could we get that together soon? Um, I did attend the PAR3 forum. Um, it was really, I thought, extremely effective in terms of what residents said and how they uh, presented ideas. You heard more tonight from Jay. Uh, we're so lucky we have such really smart people living in this community. Um, I would also like to, to add that I was a little bit surprised that it was pretty clear that this PAR 3 proposal was the answer. But then I know Mr. McDonald, you made a pretty impassioned plea that it wasn't. And then Scott Redler said something, and he's, I think, a member of the commission, that this was sort of like a trial balloon to get the community um, activated. So I just think we are owed sort of a more direct answer as to what the plan was behind the scenes. And you know, what, where are we going at this point? And it would be nice since I think four of you were in attendance at that meeting, what your views are. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Christine Best, I'm a resident and a property owner. Um, I just want to make a comment. I'm sitting here thinking about everybody looks really tired, no offense, because you work really hard. And I just wanted to say thank you, even though I come up here and complain about 5G all the time. I do, actually, you're all nice people. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to my 5G thing. Okay, so I did ask for an open request because I wanted to read the contract for Hoplite Consulting, who is our township consultant for 5G installs. And I asked for all the records, correspondence, resolutions, contracts, written and presented to the township committee or employers in regards to 5G during all of 2020. <coughs> and I listed out the committee members and, you know, from Hoplite and any of its contractors. And the answer that I got, I got two contracts. And so I was a little confused because one looks like it was partially executed in 2022 of November. And then another one that was executed in January, it had a resolution attached to it, it was a little wonky and a sort of a quasi statement of work. Um, so that was his contract. So, but the answer I got from the lovely lady, um, I forget her name, she's awesome, who um, is, works in the clerk's office. She said, kindly see attached resolutions. I require additional information regarding the presentation you are in search of. I require a date of when the presentation was shown. So if Mr. Lupo <coughs> sent, gave you any type of presentation on you know, further information besides what's actually in his SOW and contract, I'd really like to see it. Um, but she said that I have to have a specific sub subject, a date and time. I can't, if you get a presentation from somebody or there's conversations between Maggie or who, I'm sorry, Miss Megan's, um, I'm really working on that, sorry. Um, I need to, I can't pick the date that you had a random conversation or a presentation from somebody. How would I know that? So I don't, I don't like this elusive process on Oprah. I'm just calling it up the township on it. I do want to point out something that really concerns me. I went and did a little research. I'm not, you know, I'm not, uh, and I looked at the chief technology officer at Hoplite Communications on LinkedIn, and he has like no contacts, followers or anything or a picture. So I hope you guys really research these people because it kind of concerns me as to their skill set in terms of like making out these decisions. Peter Lupo also has multiple profiles. So on LinkedIn, he has a profile as attorney at Wireless Network Consulting Group. I don't know if that's a defunct business of his. Again, no contacts, really, maybe one or two contacts, two followers, no image, et cetera, no resume. I find that a little strange. I'll leave these for you guys. Um, he also has another LinkedIn page. It says Colonel at United States Army Reserve. And then his experience as attorney at the law office of Peter J. Lufo and Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel. Nothing about Hoplite Consulting. So when I searched for Hoplite Consulting or Communications on LinkedIn, I couldn't find anything. He does have a website and he also has a website for his attorney business. Okay. His attorney business has different practices. I'm sorry. I get nervous when I have to rush because I really like to share everything that I have with you. But um, 
he talks about primarily real estate law that he does and some telecommunications work, but he talks about having 15 years experience. And really when he talks on his Hoplite, so when he shifts over to his Hoplite consulting webpage, he says he has 15 years experience in industry. I really can't see, you know, I'd like to see his resume from you guys if you'd share that with me, because I don't really think he's qualified to talk about anything that's science-based or safety-based. And I just wanted to, if you will allow me, if you won't, I totally understand. I do want to say, I think you should review his website in full because it's very clear to me that he is pro industry. Okay. All you have to do is read what his, his statements are. Okay. I did want to just quickly, if you, I, I'd like to actually be helpful. I write a lot of contracts for different businesses that are actually safe. And one of the things that concern me, and I'm sorry about this, is that you know, he, he doesn't have a statement of work with any deliverables in his contract. He just has sort of these projects that he's going to do with estimates of his hourly work, but there's no deliverable deadlines. There's no like, I'm going to deliver X. That's just what a statement of work looks like. Okay. That is really not in part of his contract. So for a $25,000 contract, if I was doing an SOW with somebody or an outside contractor, mine would not look like that. So that's concerning to me because we are tight on budget. Um, as Sanji was talked about, Mr. Vinyak's talked about multiple times. Um, you guys didn't do a competitive bid. It states it in the contract. Um, he, there's no, um, there's no, he's not hiring. He doesn't have an EMF scientist from what I can see on his staff or an environmental doctor on staff, nor do we have that on our board of health, which I checked. I think there's one doctor left on the board of health. I don't really know what they do. Um, so there's no meetings that I've seen set up. What has he accomplished to date? I'm almost done. Sorry. Thank you, Maggie. Um, and um, so, you know, I just, again, wanted to point out it wasn't done. The contract wasn't done through the open and fair process. And he does continually discuss safety throughout his whole presentation, but does not present who he's going to have that on his staff to, to look at safety and what his skill set is. Um, so it's very unclear to me. And, um, you know, and there was also, I just want to point out, there's a lot of things that were stricken from his contract and nobody initialed and dated that. So, I mean, to me, this is Ms. kind of invalid. Ms. Best, so, why don't you, okay. if you wish to leave that, you can leave that with us and then we can look at your- yeah, I'm going to just organize it and I'll, I'll leave it. Is that fine? Awesome. Right, Thank yes. you. Thank you so much, Ms. Best. <laughs> Good evening, Jerry Kong. I'm a resident. Um, I don't have much to say today, so I can take a breather and talk a little slower than I normally talk. Um, so I did notice on the bill list that the engineering firm, Vanessa Hengen Bruslin, um, I think the check's going to be made out to them for $3,107 and $510 for a remedial investigation of the DPW site or 9 Main Street. Um, as far as I'm aware, the last thing that they've done publicly for the town was in August 19th of last year. Um, and we're more than six months away from that now. So I'm just wondering if why this is only getting paid now, um, if there's any been any new work done, or was this for work done more than six months ago? Um, I know I still had a couple outstanding questions about the analysis that they had presented to the DEP regarding the places where they were taking the soil borings, specifically to the side and underneath the areas of known historical contamination. Um, so if we're going to be building 75 units of affordable housing there, um, I just wanna make sure that it actually gets remediated properly. I know last time attorney Marizidi stated that if it's contaminated, then nothing's going to get built there. But the question is, if you don't test it properly, how do you know that you're going to remediate it properly? So I think it's very important for this community to know that the remedial investigation is being done properly and to the standards that our community deserves. Um, another thing I'd like to just say is I, I thought it was very strange that the tenor of last Thursday's meeting regarding the par three golf course had changed considerably from what was presented in front of the township committee. Um, I just wonder if it's possible for a public forum that uh, both Mr. Feld and Ms. Pasternak have suggested um, related to fair share housing for that to be undertaken in a similar fashion. Um, it seems that the PAR-3 had been presented to us as a fait accompli, um, and as we know, the Fair Share Housing Settlement was exactly that, because there was no public comment prior to the settlement agreement being signed. And so I think that this community just deserves an opportunity to actually have a back and forth about this Fair Share Housing Settlement. And I think there's still a lot of members of the community that still have questions regarding the exact contents of the settlement agreement. Um, I, 
couldn't help but to eavesdrop a couple of the members next to me in the public. They got these letters in the mail and they were concerned about what's actually going on in town. So I, I don't think that everyone has a crystal clear picture as to you know, what, every, what the settlement agreement entails. Um, so that's all I have for tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Khan. Hi, my name is Frank Sacamandi and I'm a resident. So this is a question that I think attorney Marazidi can probably answer best. So uh, at the last meeting, I addressed the mayor by her first name. She had what I would describe as a hissy fit when I did that. And uh, I wanted to know, is there any law or ordinance that requires residents to address the mayor by her preferred name? Because if not, then Maggie, I think you'll have to get used to people calling you Maggie. Thank you. If you're, if you're, if you're my friend and we have a nice relationship, of course you may use me, use my first name if I give you permission. But this is a business meeting, Mr. Sakamandi the fourth. And so since it is a business meeting, we respect each other in this business meeting. So Ms. Miggins is perfectly fine if you don't wish to call me Mayor Miggins. You may call me Ms. Miggins. We just wouldn't want the world thinking that we had a good relationship. Thank you. I'm asking about the law, not. We are running a business meeting, Mr. Sakamandi the fourth. I'll say it again. We're running a business meeting. Thank you. Anybody online? Great. Oh, just one minute, do you mind? We just have one person online and then sir, no, no, stay right there, please. Yes, thank you. Someone coming on, Jeff? Yes. Mr. No picture? You have to be in. I'll, I'll try again after. Okay, sir, please. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Raj Singh, a property owner and resident. Um, Good evening. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to respectfully submit that, you know, I have not received some of these documents about settlement, the letter. And me and many of my other neighbors have did not receive it. So we're still trying to find out um, what's going on, especially with the Canoebrook section. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. And that's will be discussed later, just so you're aware of that. Thank you. Good evening. Did I get you? Ms. Ursa, could you please put your video on, video on, please? Sure, this whole thing is process has changed. I'm sorry, hold on a second. That's okay. It does say like panelists or attendees, doesn't say on mute anymore. Okay, hi gang. Hello, Ms. Ursa, good evening. Thank, good evening, thank you so much. So I didn't hear anything in some of the reports, so I have a few comments and questions. Uh, I'm a property owner, business owner. Um, so I have to ask, uh, what is the status regarding the commercial solid waste change and collection? And will the effective date still remain June 1, 2023? And will the commercial property owners be entitled to a reduction in property taxes for a service that no longer will be provided? What is the township's position on the New Jersey State newly required a requirement regarding insurance registration? And what is the process and will there be once again, one more fee? Regarding pedestrian safety, I would invite the deputy mayor to visit lot 14. When will the township hold the next public forum regarding the parking lot 14 and following up on some of the questions and concerns and as the traffic and the speeding continues, I would like to request pedestrian safety crossing signs until the intended changes actually begin. On Thursday, March 2nd, 2023, I sent an email to the township department heads regarding the SID tax assessments and asking and requesting to be, um, the assessments be deposited into the trust accounts held by the municipal attorney or the SID attorney while we are pending um, a response for the validity of the five expanded appointed uh, board. 
We also have, uh, what is the purpose behind purchasing 161 Spring Street from the Cipatini family in 2008? Were there ever intentions on the township during negotiations to use that property to satisfy their affordable housing obligations? And or were, was it to be the property solely to be used for employee parking? Wouldn't it be more advantageous to better utilize a $3 million investment and have employees park at the underutilized parking garage on Essex? And lastly, I'd like to say strange things seem to be happening in Millburn. I've recently received a notice for an outstanding water bill for five years. This notice stated a disconnection for non-payment, but in actuality, bills were never received. After many phone calls, apparently there's been some confusion that there is no separation between Milburn and Short Hills. How is the township identified with the New Jersey American Water Company? And is there a distinction between Milburn and Short Hills? Have a wonderful evening and thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Urso. I will now close the public comment period. At this time, our professionals and committee members may directly answer any questions made by the public. Please only directly answer questions that you may wish to come on on and do not request that other members or professionals. A reminder, it's not a time for dialogue or debate. Uh, if any of the members of the public wish to, they can contact the township or the township committee members anytime outside of our business meetings. Mr. McDonald, I will now start with you. Do you have anything you wish to address from public comment? Uh, yes. Um, I'd just like to address the uh, RFP uh, regarding the uh, movement of the DPW. Uh, this RFP is uh, not for construction, but this is for a uh, firm to look at what is necessary for us to do at JFK, uh, given the organic material that is there and if we need to put down pavement, uh, as well as any permits that are required. Um, and uh, with, with regard to DEP or any other uh, agencies. So um, as everyone is aware, and we have talked about many times that there is a portion of DPW that will need to move. Um, part of that solution uh, that has been discussed in the public was a move to the JFK site. Um, so my office has authorized that RFP because we need to do the work. Um, and um, certainly until otherwise directed, um, we will continue to work toward uh, those things that need to be completed. Um, so that is the reason for that RFP. Uh, the question that Ms. Best had regarding, and I'm just gonna speak to uh, open and fair process. Um, the Mr. Lupo's contract at the end of last year uh, was a uh, bifurcate, you know, was a short contract. Uh, as a result of coming into the 2023 year and wanting to make sure the contract uh, was for a year. Um, the fair and open process, um, that is not necessarily some, there's, there's a multitude of processes when it comes, processes that when it comes to RFPs, uh, one is fair and open, uh, one is non-fair and open. Um, and so this followed the non-fair and open process. Uh, just as far as where Mr. Lupo came from, um, you know, this is a little bit of a niche uh, market when it comes to assisting municipalities, when it comes to land use with uh, wireless technology. Um, and I reached out to multiple municipalities who have, who utilize Mr. Lupo uh, as, the, as their consultant on this. Uh, every single one of them has been extremely happy with his work. Um, Mr. Lupo is currently working on ordinances um, with regard to 4G and 5G technology to help further protect the township's right of ways. Um, so that is the, uh, the issue with uh, Mr. Lupo. Um, to, Mr. to Dr. Kung's uh, comment about VHB, that is a very old bill. So that is not any additional work that was completed. Um, and um, with regard to Ms. Urso's comment, um, about the purpose of 161, I believe, which is referring to the rim back uh, storage that was there. Um, I believe the original intention of that was actually to move town hall. So um, the, and, and as you recall, back in 2008, there were just redevelopment uh, discussions and redevelopment plans and things like that. So, 
you know, again, it is not for me to decide whether it's better utilized than employee parking, but I would uh, struggle to ask my employees to necessarily walk from the parking deck each day. However, if that's the solution, that's the solution if something else is built there. Um, but for now, it is being utilized in that way. Those are all the comments I have. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Deputy Mayor Benaya, do you have any comments for us, sir? Yes, there are a few. I would like to also answer them or try to answer them. Uh, there was a comment being made uh, or a comment was made about attorney retainer 20K. Uh, that actually started last year, uh, the whole of last year, as far as I know. Uh, it was in 2021, we have looked into how we can reduce our attorney bills. And 10K retainer or whatever that lower retainer was, it did not cover a lot of things. And the hourly was going above, way above uh, that, that retainer or hourly was on top of that retainer. We actually club a lot of things that you ask for Oprah or other, there are a lot of things that we actually bundled up and made that retainer as 20K per month. That's why we have been uh, doing better on our, on our legal bills. So 20K is just on the retainer. That does not include any of the cases that our attorney uh, goes in the court for us. And this is mainly for running the regular day-to-day -day, uh, for our legal bills. Property sale for $1. I, we have explained that multiple times. Mr. McDonald, I would request you to please explain again because we have discussed this several times internally ourselves here. Um, this affordable housing, and there was a comment made again, something in Massachusetts was kind of uh, telling the country what they have done. It'll be great if a judge can stop this and can say, okay, you have to do this process all over again. We would love to do that. But if you could tell that uh, the dollar bill on that. Um, well, certainly, I, I, I can, and I think that also this will come up um, under resolution 085 um, when we speak about um, the redevelopment process with regard to 11 Main Street. Um, and the reason for Mr. with for topologies um, separate proposal, which in, by extension acts as a change order to their, their contract, um, but it is a separate proposal for this particular work. Um, the sale of the property for a dollar is if the township followed a, and certainly Mr. Marizidi can um, can discuss this further, but is is for a different process than redevelopment. But either way, um, if the municipally sponsored project is sold to this particular developer, RPM, it is um, it is just whatever that price is. If it's a million dollars or two million dollars, it's just. Uh, more uh, money that will be uh, needed from the municipality to finance any sort of gap or from any sort of funding source, whether it's, you know, 4% low income housing tax credits, aspire, whatever it might be, um, those that that sale of the property will just go on the other side of the, the ledger. So in short, what we have been told or what my understanding is, if we sell this land for $2 million, that $2 million will increase. That, that project will increase by $2 million and the gap will have to pay. So no matter what we charge for that, we'll have to pay from our pocket as far as I know on the budget side. So if it goes for a dollar, that's the number of or amount that is going down. And I appreciate all the people in the room, what knowledge they come from or what they have. I would request of not underestimating what people on this other side do. I mean, another comment I heard was trash tax. I'm not aware of what you're talking about. Maybe you know. Okay. I know that our trash bill has gone double last year from a million to two million. And we have incorporated that within our, our services. That is something our township gives and provides to the residents. There are other townships that do not provide that service and charge separately, but we don't, we have this. So I don't know where that notion comes from. A lot of things that goes around that are not true. So it's, I'm glad it got cleared up here. Deputy Mayor, I just, just interject that. I think the individual that said that started the, the statement with rumor has it. So um, we want to be very careful rumors. obviously. Okay, so yeah. 
that, okay, that rumor is, hazard. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I also rumor attended song. part three uh, meeting last Thursday, and I've also seen it here. Uh, again, this is only my thought process. I wouldn't be too keen on voting for part three to be changed to field as well, because I've seen a lot of residents talking about it. But last year or two years ago, we have approved JFK Expressway for having, when you enter that lot, on the right side to have a parking space and salt dome for DPW. And on the left side, parking places and the field for the town residents. So we were waiting for affordable housing, the nine Main Street project to go or whatever that happened there. But since we know that is moving, whether that moves or doesn't move, I am in favor of the GFK Expressway site to have a field to start with that field at least there, where we know we have a leaf compost site, we can do that function somewhere else. Not all town does leaf compost in their own town. Secondly, uh, there's an old Shortles Park that had limitation restriction until end of last year. That restriction does not apply to us anymore because whatever restriction was, it was till the end of the sun passing away and that sun has passed away. That doesn't mean that we should go and be rude and do anything, but we have another place that we can do, make more parking there and have a couple of fields there too. So yes, there will be resident on that side will come, but I would rather vote for that than actually for part three. That is again, my thing. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Deputy. Ms. Krupas, do you have anything for us? Um, just a few things. Thank you. I just wanna reiterate to 23, dash 085 we're going to talk about that before i mean we're going to that's why Greg's sitting here and yes and joe and everyone so Correct. we're going to talk more about that Correct. and the form for affordable housing so this compliance hearing has been postponed so many times and it will be again until probably the end of april or mid to end of april hopefully at some point but i really think that we can get this form together before yes that's that right. hearing so alex like where are we with that do you have a date or do you have are we I close have a date this time. but can you commit to a date I like can, meaning i mean i commit to, i can commit to getting it commit to getting a date <laughs> and um unfortunately i wasn't in, in town last thursday so i was the one committee member not at the part three discussion um, and I was disappointed that it wasn't zoomed and talked to Alex about it, but the next one will be zoomed. Um, and my point about that is I heard it went well, and I'm hoping that the affordable housing one will be kind of set up in that same way where people will have the ability to have that same back and forth discussion uh, when it is held. And Lastly, is the one question that was not answered yet was, is the commercial trash still on board to be changed for June 1st? Is that still the timeline? That is still the timeline. Uh, however, there are some things that need to happen between now and then. Um, so it can always change, but I think at this point, I would just ask that people plan for that June 1st. Great, thanks. Mr. Cohen? Yeah, I have a couple of things. <coughs> Excuse me. I also sit on the finance committee with Mr. Vinayak and, and Mr. McDonald. I'd like to quash the other rumor has it that was about the open space tax. As far as I know, that was only proposed as a possibility by council member Eaglo, who is no longer on the council, as you can see, and we haven't heard anything about it since. So let's put that one to rest as well. As, as, far, as far as the fields, um, I think the other thing to come out of that meeting, which was very different than what had happened before the meeting, is that I guess based on the work that the rec department had, had come into and they mentioned it here, they had difficulty using the Board of Education fields. Coming out of that meeting, as you as for those of you who were there, it started to get a little out of hand with people saying, where's the Board of Education? Why aren't they there? Well, they were there. Cheryl Schneider, the CFO was there. She spoke up and I think, one of, the better, one of the best things to come out of that meeting is that now we can assume there will be cooperation between the rec department and the Board of, Board of Education. And whether that leads to turfing some of the Board of Education fields or a better system for reservations, that's a big change from where we were a month ago. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Ms. Romano? 
Um, I was going to bring it up in old business, but um, I also was very encouraged by all the uh, community involvement following the discussion last week. Um, and what we, the conclusion that we all came to is that, yes, we need uh, more residential space for all ages and all community groups. So I'm hoping that maybe, maybe later, um, Mr. Petto, if you could, um, maybe just talk to us a little bit about the next steps to address the recreation and open space element of our master plan. Maybe we can start there. Thanks. Mr. Marazzini. Yes, Mayor, I do have a few uh, things to talk about. I'll start with the issue of the, uh, as it's been referred to as the dollar payment. And it uh, there's two aspects to that. One is the one that Committeeman Vinayak mentioned having to do with the financial impact on the uh, township if there's more paid for the property than, than a nominal amount. The other aspect of that is a legal question as to whether the municipality can actually transfer the property for less than the fair market value. And the answer to that is yes, there are two ways to do that. One is under the local lands and buildings law where there is a specific exception uh, in that law uh, to authorize the transfer of property for the purpose of, of, of affordable housing. Um, and in, other, in, in, in words other than affordable housing, the other way to do it is uh, by way of uh, use of the redevelopment process. And that is the way that we're looking at now. That's going to be the subject of the further discussion about the uh, proposal from topology to prepare a redevelopment plan uh, that would enable the utilization of the redevelopment process. The redevelopment process is one that provides a benefit uh, to the uh, township uh, because it provides more financing tools that can make the financing of the project uh, less burdensome on the municipality. So that is an option that uh, has been considered and will be voted on later this evening. Um, I want to mention something about Daniel's Law. Daniel's Law specifically does specifically relate to law enforcement and members of the judiciary. Uh, it has created a great deal of confusion among many people who are obligated to administer it because of the, of the need to figure out who exactly is in law enforcement in a particular municipality or in a particular residence. Many, many attorneys have been trying to figure out how to deal with this. For example, with respect to the uh, the list that comes from the tax assessor when there's an application that requires that there be a list of property owners within 200 feet of a property. Uh, the prevailing view has been uh, that in order to protect, protect the identity of uh, those uh, who are covered by the law, that instead of giving the names of the property owners, that there would be a statement uh, current owner and then the address because it's intended to protect the name and the identity and that applies to many things that are being uh, being implicated that uh, were not I don't think really originally understood to be the implications of this and it 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 it, it, uh, it flows in many ways on the obligation of the municipality to adhere to the proper administration of, of that law. So I understand the question and I understand the confusion about it. Um, I'm gonna move on to the uh, question about, uh, I don't know if it's a question, but the, there's been a reference to a Supreme Court decision uh, that was handed down today in Massachusetts, Massachusetts by the Supreme Court of Massachusetts. Uh, it has no relevance on anything we're doing here. If it, if it did, if it, did, if it was the New Jersey Supreme Court, it would not have any impact on anything doing here that we're doing here either. That Supreme Court decision uh, did not say anything that would change anything you're doing in terms of the way the meetings are conducted. That case happened to deal with the interpretation of the Massachusetts Constitution, a provision in that Constitution actually written by John uh, and Sam Adams. So it's an, uh, it was an interesting case. I found it interesting. I looked at it carefully 
and I have no recommendations to make uh, as to how anything should change in the way these meetings are conducted. Um, and so uh, you should not be concerned about that case, even if it was in New Jersey. The, um, the other, moving around here, the other uh, statement I want to clarify, I, I did not say that if the DPW site is contaminated, it will not be built on. It's my understanding it is contaminated. Um, what I said, I want to clarify that, it will not be built on for residential purposes unless it is remediated to the residential standards that are applicable uh, as a result of the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection. That's a very different statement. I just want to make that clear. Um, next, I want to say that, I, no, I, the only law I know about how you address people is a law of common courtesy. Uh, and I, uh, I follow that, and many people up here do, do as well. And then lastly, with respect to the request that all of the assessments that are made uh, by the CID should be held in escrow by my firm or some other firm, um, that is a proposal I would recommend you not entertain for a split second. Um, imagine the implications of that anytime somebody uh, appealed their taxes, uh, put the tax payment in escrow. It would uh, ultimately over time uh, result in the financial crippling of the township and, and in this case, the SID. There's no order of a court uh, that requires that that be done. Uh, there is no stay on the uh, activities of the, uh, of the SID during the pendency of that litigation. And so uh, that action, if the township were to take that action, would be in effect a, 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 a way of uh, undermining everything done by the SID. And so I recommend that you not do that. There's no legal obligation that that be done. Thank you. And I think much. that covers everything that came my way. I thank uh, Committeeman Ben Anjak for uh, addressing the issue of our retainer. I was going to deal with that, but you dealt with it much better than I could. I, I want to talk about that in a second, too. Um, because a, a few things to Mr. Feld. Mr. Feld um, continually wants to meet with us in um, every email that he sends us. And we probably get about five a day. And in those emails, he's always requesting to meet with us. Now, he is suing the town and he's representing others that are suing the town. And so I wanna talk about that a second because in order for us to meet with Mr. Feld ever, a gentleman who's suing the town, and he's cost the town almost $130,000 with those lawsuits. Um, I'd like to know, excuse me, Mr. Feld, I'm speaking. Excuse me, sir. In order for us to meet with him, we would have to have legal counsel with us, would we not? If the purpose of the meeting was to deal with the particular litigation, absolutely yes. Um, Mr. Feld, however, has a couple of hats he wears, and yeah. one of them is as a citizen of the township. And in that regard, if he, if he were not discussing the matters in litigation, it would not be necessary to have an attorney present. Yeah but I would still feel comfortable having attorneys present just in case something else was interjected that's, within the conversation. A, He's the attorney, I'm yeah. just a broker. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Feld, yes, we, I asked him to compile all of the costs so far because of all the emails you send us. In fact, I've had people from the media contact me to just through your Oprah request. So I asked the clerk to please get for us exactly how many Oprah requests you've sent and to the town and how much work they've done. So just so you're aware of that, um, through, through January 31st, you, we've spent over $128,000 right. on your legal costs. Mm -hmm. And you're also representing two other people that are suing the town. Mm -hmm. And then in addition to that, you have sent approximately 1,766 emails to us and our clerk, address right to Miss Gaddy. And you've never- and you've, Excuse me, I'm still speaking, sir. Mm -hmm. And you've requested since 2020, 1,241 records. So this is everything you've been requesting from our clerk who has become your full-time secretary, unfortunately. And so I think it's important that when you're discussing law bills and how much we're paying our attorneys, that the public knows 
because you're one person of 22,000, but the public needs to know that we've spent this type of money with you, sir. It's over $128,000. We could hire a few police officers, which I'd much prefer to have more police officers and safety in our streets. How You're entitled to it, but I think the public needs to be aware of the fact that when you come up and you ask us about how much our attorneys are charging and about OPRA requests, exactly how many you, one person, has has sent into our town. I think it's very important that the township knows that. That's Why do you all. get an injunction to stop me from filing open requests? Nobody's saying not to do that. All you're I'm saying, excuse me, no, no, excuse me, Mr. Feld, this isn't a dialogue. What I'm telling you is that this is what you've done and you're entitled to do it, but the township needs to know about it. That's all, that's all I'm saying. And Thank you also you, hid the bills Thank for, for Nobody's hiding anything, for sir. a year. This for isn't public insurance. comment. This isn't public comment. Thank you, sir. Now, in reference to Mr. Morreale, I think the property for the uh, East Orange property is for their water source. So I don't know if we could necessarily, we could, I think we tried to ask them to purchase land. Excuse me, Mr. Feld, excuse me. We're, we're, we had asked them previous times. We also have six, I guess it's six acres that is landlocked um, in the East Orange, behind the East Orange golf course. So we have, been in contact with them, but I don't think they're um, wanting to sell that property. And as far as the property where the watershed property is the conservation land that the developer is buying, we knew after the fact. If we had known before the fact, we sure would have thought to purchase that land. We had known after the fact. We did not know before the fact. I think that's really important. Um, I think you answered all these questions. So I make sure I've covered everything. That's all I have. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Consent agenda resolutions. Township committee will now consider consent agenda resolutions. Are there any comments from the committee in regards to any items listed on the consent agenda? I have a question about 23-081. Alex, can you just explain that, please? Uh, yes, the Recreation Department is looking at improvements to the Bauer Community Center, in particular, the assembly room. Um, and so this is a uh, contract for the architect uh, that would be assisting in that. Uh, this has all been part of their, their capital uh, requests over uh, last year, from last year. Got it, thank you. Is that, what does that mean? Any renovation have to be approved by the TC? Or yeah. How does that? Yeah, well, it has. It, it, yes, I, I think also this is just sort of the design, like design phase. This does is the not, design have to be approved by the TC? I think I, I think that would be so, great. So I was on the Rec Commission last year when this came through. We had approved the renovation, not renovation. We had approved some work in the power center where the walls will become softer so they can actually play basketball there and they could also use that for multi-sport inside so today it's hard surface or hard and that is what i thought it was going to be now if they're using someone to do the analysis before they really do the work is probably that's what it is or is there something else mr uh, well i think there is also some structural issue some structural um work that would need to be done to make it um, uh, available for, for basketball as well. Okay. Yeah. But it's not necessarily a, an aesthetic change or design, um, but, but certainly is something that would be before the township committee, not only from a design perspective, but also, uh, an authorization to go out the bid. And that type of thing. So this is just for the plans. Correct. Got it. Thanks. Any other comments? May I have a motion to approve resolution 23-076 through resolution 23-084, which are listed on the consent agenda. So moved. May I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Brugis? Yes. Ms. Romano? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vanaya? Yes. Mayor Miggins? Yes. Thank you. Resolution 23-085. 
authorize amendment to the professional service agreement for redevelopment plan and process with township planner topology. Are there any comments from the committee in regards to resolution 23-085, which was also listed on the last agenda? Graham, do you want to? Yeah, maybe Graham can explain. Mr. Petta, thank you. Good evening. Uh, good, evening. Yeah. <laughs> good evening. Good evening, Mayor Biggins, measures of the... Maybe. There we go. There you go. Okay, members of the Township Committee, uh, Graham Petto, Principal of Topology, uh, here as the Township Planner this evening. Um, the proposal before you, um, as part of the resolution package, um, is to prepare a redevelopment plan, as Mr. Marazzini alluded to during his comments following public comment. Um, the proposal that we're uh, seeking to do is to prepare a redevelopment plan for the property at 9 Main Street um, to support the Township um, in evaluating its financial options uh, as it moves forward with development of the 75 unit 100% affordable housing project. Um, for the benefit of the Committee, uh, re the redevelopment process um, avails the Township uh, greater control, greater site control uh, at, with respect to design. Um, this has more impact and more effectuation of uh, land use controls uh, than a regular zoning or rezoning of a property. Um, through a redevelopment process, you can more, uh, great, have greater ability to stipulate design, material finishes, uh, streetscaping, and other types of uh, features and improvements uh, related as such. Um, so the proposal for you this evening is to prepare that redevelopment plan um, for your behalf as you move forward. And the most important thing that we discussed for this was that our builder will be able to seek funding from the state and from the different Aspire program. That was the most important yes. part. Yes. You gotta, I'm not a finance guru. Grants, talk. grants. Grants, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. If I could just uh, add to that, yes, the uh, township has been advised by its financial consultant that in order to um, uh, access the most beneficial uh, tax credit program, the Aspire program, mm -hmm. that there is a requirement that the project be a redevelopment project. And the Aspire program is a new program uh, undertaken by EDA. It is uh, much more advantageous than previous programs and it will be financially beneficial uh, if that program can be accessed uh, for uh, the construction, financing the construction of this facility. Thank you. I have a motion to approve resolution 23, I oh, know, pardon me. May I have a motion to approve resolution 23-085? So may I have a second? second? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Prupas? No, and I really think that we should have our affordable housing forum to discuss all this before we move ahead with anything. So I think um, that's why I'm voting no. That's fine. Ms. Romano? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vinayak? Yes. Mayor Miggins? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Ordinance 2634-23. I would like to present an ordinance entitled Ordinance 2634-23. An ordinance to amend and supplement the development regulations and zoning ordinance of the Township of Melbourne, Chapter 6, subsection 609, entitled Supplementary Regulations. The purpose of this ordinance is to amend the Township of Melbourne zoning code to include a prohibition of rooftop decks, platforms, terraces, and similar features on the roof of a building for use as a common amenity space. Such spaces are not characteristic in the Township. This supplementary regulation would apply to multifamily, mixed use, and non residential buildings. Any questions? Yeah, this thing came on to us, I think last year, a year before mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. And there, that had in there, not just the multiple, it was also residential and township did not vote at that time, Correct. only for the single family home. Now this is only for multifamily homes. So Correct. You have my vote. Great, terrific, okay. terrific. I move that this ordinance be taken up and passed on first reading and that the township clerk be authorized to have the ordinance published in accordance with law on the item and for hearing and final passage on Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. May I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Prupas? No, I don't think that it should be a blanket um, outright ban on every rooftop building in the township. Thank you. Ms. Romano? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vinayak? Yes. Mayor Miggins? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Cohen, you are scheduled to sponsor Ordinance 2635 23. <clears throat> 
I would like to present an ordinance entitled uh, Ordinance Number 2635-23, Ordinance to Exceed the Municipal Budget Appropriation Limits and to Establish a CAPA. Um, a brief explanation about this. This is a New Jersey best practice. It's something that we do every year. It's a safety measure to cover unexpected expenses. Anything that is not used as part of this budget increase will carry over to for the next two years. Last year, we did not end up using it at all, but it, and it will roll forward, but we are now replacing the one from, from three years ago. Anybody have a question? Yes, yeah, so last two years we have done this and I voted yes for it. Instead of exceeding it, and since we haven't used it in the last couple of years, I would rather look into reducing it. So I don't support this. Just that's very respectfully. Thank okay. you. Okay. I move that this ordinance be taken up and passed on first reading, and that the township clerk be authorized to have the ordinance published in accordance with law in the item and for hearing and, and final passage on Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. May I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Ms. Romano? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vinaya? No. Mayor Miggins? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Prupis, you're scheduled to sponsor Ordinance 2631-23. I present for consideration an ordinance entitled Ordinance Number 2631-23, bond ordinance providing for phases 2B, 3B, 4, 5, and 6 of the Township's allocable share of the flood mitigation facilities project for joint meeting of Essex and Union counties, appropriating 3,440,000, therefore authorizing the issuance of 3,440,000 bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof. Uh, tonight's time set for the public hearing and final passage as advertised in accordance with the law. <coughs> we'll now open the public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I move that this public hearing be closed and the ordinance be adopted on the final reading of the township clerk be directed to publish the ordinance by title as passed on final reading in accordance with the law. May I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Ms. Romano? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vinaya? Yes. Mayor Miggins? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 2632-23. This is a procedure for, for passing this on the final reading. It's amending recreation fees in Chapter 8, Parks and Recreational Areas of the Revised General Ordinances of the Township of Milburn. The purpose of this ordinance for the Township to revise fee for Milburn Township Rec Department programs. Tonight is the time set for the public hearing and final passage as advertised in accordance with law. I declare that the hearing, hearing is open. I move that this public hearing be closed and the ordinance be adopted on final reading and that the township clerk be directed to publish the ordinance by title as passed on final reading in accordance with the law. May I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Ms. Romano? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vinaya? Yes. Mayor Miggins? Yes. Thank you. On the next matter, I will be recusing myself and uh, turning over the meeting to Deputy Mayor Vinaya to chair with the, in reference to the Canoe Brook overlay zone ordinance. But I just, I, I want to make something clear. And it's only because I've been receiving calls and texts and emails about um, some confusion with the um, overlay zone. And then there's a group that has a change.org going about save the Canoe Brook Reservoir. So those are two different things. And I don't think um, most people understand that. So I just, I wanna be clear that um, the Save the Canoe Brook Reservoir has to do with the watershed property that's next to the water company that is conservation land that is being sold maybe to uh, Woodmont Properties. That's, that's totally different than the overlay zone for the Canoe Brook Country Club. And people have asked me, um, which I think I can say, people had asked me, and you'll tell me if I can't. Well, maybe, maybe I better find out what you're gonna say. Just say. <laughs> it'll be too late. Well, they just want, they wanna be able to say if they had a question who they can contact because that's public knowledge. You're not talking about an overlay zone. I'm not talking about an overlay zone at all. I'm talking about the fact that 
there is great concern from our residents. And we as a township committee, unfortunately, are not allowed to discuss it. However, on May 11th, the Watershed Property Review Board will be reviewing the um, whether or not they will allow for the purchase of the conservation land to be purchased by a developer. And there is a, a group that is vehemently against it. We have no say about it, but they did wish that on May 11th that people do know and that if they had any concern, they can look at the Watershed Property Review Board website. They could also email um, jessica.patterson at dep.nj.gov. And that also there's Milburn for climate action at Gmail. Yeah, sure. And then stop, I could stop. stop. Okay, but they asked me to, and, and there is some confusion out there. there. So now I will recuse myself, but there is confusion about the watershed <clears> property <throat> and unprecedented that it would be developed and then about the overlays on the Cooney book. So now I will leave. Okay, now I'm recusing. In order to chair the meeting, can I sit here and chair or do I need to come? You can, you can sit now. Okay, chair. thank yes. you. I present for consideration an ordinance entitled Ordinance Number 2633-23, Ordinance Amending and Supplementing the Township of Melbourne Development Regulations and Zoning Ordinance. Tonight is the time set for public hearing and final passage as advertised in accordance with law. I declare the hearing open. I'm Jeffrey Feld, I'm a public citizen. Uh, I ask you to pause consideration of this ordinance today. First, the hearing has been postponed to April. I ask you to postpone this until you have the public forum. I ask you to postpone it until you get a written legal opinion from this gentleman. You can consult the 40 other attorneys that you talked about earlier today, whether we, the public, would divide, abridge our rights for civic, robust informed civic participation as to the terms of this. Because if you look at what the master plan said in 2018, and the overlay how it changed on a piece of property that has water repairing and rights, the public never understood how the density increased. This group, you will own this. There is an issue here. The court will have to make a determination. Because we heard about everyone should join a petition to stop the Woodmount property. It's the same concern. The public had no idea what was happening at Woodmont, had no idea what was happening as to the overlays, had no idea what was happening as to the DPW site, which is contradicted what was told to us about 45 days earlier at a public forum as to what would happen there. And no one knew about any says. I would just say, take a pause, have your public forum, Explain it to us rather than you committing and owning what you're doing and possibly a violation until you get an opinion from this gentleman and his former predecessor and talk to 40 attorneys whether we had a right to know what the terms of the settlement were before you considered it approved. I'd like to agree with what Mr. Feld just said. Um, <clears throat> I'm not an attorney. I don't know um, every corner of the law. I, I'm a resident of this township for 27 years. And I do feel sincerely that given the amount of time we've spent as residents coming to meetings, begging for this chance for our community to have an opportunity to hear the details and have a chance to weigh in, ask questions. We were not given that opportunity before this settlement agreement was signed. You can do the right thing. This would be a symbolic time to do that, to say we recognize that our citizens should have had that opportunity. And you've seen the result of doing that. It's very positive. You all will be well rewarded for giving your constituents a chance to ask, get their questions answered and understand fully what this town's future is going to hold through this settlement agreement. Thank you. Hi, Ellie Jennings, Jim Breakers Road. 
uh, the reason why I'm disturbed about this, this is your second reading to consideration and adoption of the ordinance on Canoe Country Club. You're talking to a very few amount of people because not everyone got your letter. It was only sent to like a selected few. And now you're considering this without anybody in the township of being aware of it, which isn't right. Everyone should have a right to hear what's going on. I received, I did not receive the letter. The gentleman back there didn't receive it. She, you received it. I don't know if you got the letter. And it seems like just the properties that are 200 feet from the country club got the letter. Anybody that's adjacent to their houses never got anything. So this should still be up in the air until everyone is notified. Thank you. Yeah, I just have a comment. I'm going to just make this brief. I'm in full support of what the last few people spoke about. Um, and I'd just like to make a suggestion of ordinance you might want to consider adopting. I really don't think it's that much work or effort or cost to the taxpayers to actually, every time you vote on some majorly critical issue like this, to possibly just Xerox a handout, a little mini PowerPoint deck, and send it out in the mail. You have everybody's address. Everybody should be notified. I get no notifications from the towns at all. In fact, I didn't know that they were digging up lead pipes in our neighborhood as a part of the DEP project from American Water Company. I didn't know that. And I've lead poisoning. So thanks for telling us. Anyhow, I hope that you listen to what they said. All right, I'm Connie Dacey. I'm a resident and property owner. I just wanted to say that I agree with my fellow uh, citizens who have come up and asked you to please postpone this. I live on Canoe Brook. I knew nothing about this. I happened to run into a neighbor while I was walking and uh, he told me he couldn't come tonight. Would I come? And I said, well, what's this about? When he told me what was about, I don't, I know nothing about the, what agreement you reached or what is proposed. And I think that we are owed an opportunity to know about it and be informed about it. Uh, much more than having uh, passing through a, a block and talking to someone saying they're going to do something here. So um, yes, I just want to let you know that I concur with the requests that have been made. Thank you. Hi, Frank Sacamandi. So it's unfortunate that there are residents in the room that still aren't aware of what's going on, because this is obviously part of a much larger settlement agreement that we've all been discussing for months and months. It was a key election issue. So I think uh, in light of the fact that these residents don't know what's going on, I would hope before you vote on it, take the time to explain to them that it's part of a larger settlement agreement. And it's something that Maggie and um, uh, Richard Wasserman negotiated and then the township committee at that time voted on the settlement agreement without giving uh, the public advance notice of what was in the settlement agreement. So I think you should explain all of that to the residents before you vote on it. Um, because clearly there's a lot of people that still have questions and I'm very glad that they came out tonight to uh, ask those questions and I just hope that you answered them. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Online? Uh, uh, it's the same thing again, Raj Singh, Timber Acres. Uh, we didn't, I didn't get the letter. I heard it from some my other neighbors and I checked with some other people around. They didn't get it either. Thank you, Mr. Singh. What is the proposal? I'm still in the dark. Uh, Richard, so I, I just like to say that what's the rush to make the vote? Can you tell me what the rush is? Thank you. Let's wait on the online. Let's hear them first. Yeah, please come on in. 
I may be repeating what some of the other people said because I couldn't hear everything that was, that's been said up here. I live adjacent to the country club. This is the first time I've ever heard of anything. And this is the second reading. I received a registered mail, certified mail from the country club. That was the first time. A day or two later, I received something from the town mentioning this happening. I don't understand what it is. Is a country club going out of business and selling off its property? Is the country club going to sell property and we're gonna have some housing and some apartment buildings there? I don't understand it at all. And, and you're going to vote on it tonight? This is incredible, totally incredible. My, my neighbors didn't get a letter. They're here because I notified them. And I'm not sure everybody who lives adjacent to, to the country club received a letter. Jay Morrell, the resident property owner. I will repeat my request from, I think it was four weeks ago when I suggested the township consider increasing the distance and time to provide notification to residents of important changes that are coming. I realize that there are mandatory minimum amounts of time that are required by law, but that does not mean that this township could not increase the time and the distance when people get notified of important changes occurring around their property. Thank you. Uh, Jerry Kong, I'm just going to take this opportunity to walk through some of the things. I know I'm not a planner, but there's many overlay zones. We're talking about Canoe Brook right now. There's, I believe, five other overlay zones. How many other residents in town don't know that their properties are abutting the overlay zones that have already been passed? The 40 units an acre along Milburn Avenue, where the Trader Joe's currently is. The 25 units an acre in downtown Milburn. Sorry, I'm probably getting some of these numbers wrong. It's been a while. The 18 units an acre in the CMO zone next to ShopRite. Uh, the 18 units an acre off of Morris Turnpike uh, between Benihana and AT&T. And then the OR1 zone where the Hilton currently is, I believe that's at 20, maybe 25 units an acre. How many people in our town still don't know about these overlays? I think, I think the township has done a pretty terrible job explaining and getting the word out to residents. As Ms. Best said, you have all our addresses, maybe send a pamphlet with every tax bill saying, hey, this is what's happening to our town. You know, there's also, in addition to the overlay zones, there's two unmet need bonus projects. And uh, so that's the 75 unit DPW project. It's not clear why we're affirmatively building housing units for the unmet need. That's never been explained to us. I've asked that at at least four different uh, public meetings. Um, the Woodmont project that we're all of a sudden so concerned about because of its watershed, that's also an unmet need bonus project for 39 affordable units, 195 total units. And that's not including the other projects that are part of our RDP, 114 units. Um, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, but there's the Woodland Road project on Chatham Road, uh, the Annie Says project, the Wells Fargo project, and also the Upton, which is already done. But I think that this public forum, it's becoming increasingly clear. And I think we, we're seeing some new faces today that are hearing about this for the first time. I think a public, a public forum is really necessary for everyone to know all of the parts of the settlement agreement. And yes, I, I see everyone's you know making faces at me. They're, I've been a broken record. You're uninterested in what, I'm, what any one of these people in the room have to say. You're going to pass it anyway. You're not gonna delay. We all understand how the process works. Um, so, just going to take my three minutes to uh, explain all of this, at least my understanding of it, um, and I'll get off my soapbox now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anybody else in the room who wants to talk? It's only once. If you've gone, your time's. No, 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 not you. You cannot repeat, Miss. No, Miss. You cannot is there repeat it. Anybody here who's going to explain? What yes. This is? Once you're done, when you sit down, please let me. So we'll all understand it. Please have a seat. Okay. Miss. Yes. 
Right, now let's go online. Hi, good evening, Perry Urso, 514 Milburn Avenue. First, um, I'd like to ask um, if I can get a legal opinion about speaking online that am I required when I'm making a public comment to put video on? I am not testifying. So Mr. Marizzini, if you would be kind enough to uh, clarify that, please. But uh, respectfully so, if, if I need to keep my video on, that's fine. I just find that this is unfathomable that we are one of the only communities that are not affording their residents, their property owners, the opportunity to an open public forum. This is disgraceful. I, I just, I, it's unbelievable that you're not um, answering people's questions or even allowing a larger forum. And uh, also I'd like to say, you know, there's concerns about overlays. I've asked over and over again, why certain areas were even jumped over, over um, and not even considered. And also my last comment is that the mayor recuses herself because there's a conflict of interest, but the mayor refuses to refuse her, recuse herself during things that have to do with the um, special improvement district. So that's a conflict of interest and that's very disturbing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Herschel. Is there anyone else online? Okay, most of the people who are here for the, now I close the public comment. Most of the people who are here for the first time, they don't know, but people who come in here often, they know the process. We hear everyone first. It is not a dialogue between you and the people here. Once that comment section gets done, then we start talking here and then your dialogue gets done. So what Ms. Erso said and what other people were saying in here, if they have been here before, they know the drill, they know the process. So before I intervene in the middle for you guys, I just wanted to get this thing done and now we'll get to that. So Mr. McDonald, Ms. Mr. Marazidi, do you have anything to answer first? Um, well, I think that it's, um, you know, Mr. Petto is here uh, who will be able to help explain the Canoebrook overlay. Um, I would just like to clarify um, only because, and again, I understand I, my direction from the Township Committee, um, and we will we will get a public forum uh, and inf information session set up. And I think it's particularly important as a result of you know things that will be occurring with 11 Main Street. However, we have had multiple public information sessions on affordable housing. We have a website that is dedicated to affordable housing with a lot of information on it. Now, I'm not saying that that means everybody should know about it. I'm just saying that these things have taken place and I don't want it to be construed as if the township has not gone through those efforts uh, to make sure that public, uh, I remember one distinctly on March 10th in the middle school. Um, so uh, I just wanna be, 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 be clear on that. And again, uh, looking forward to and happy to uh, have another one, um, but I just wanted to make that comment. Do you have anything, Mr. Marzini? Yes, I have a couple of things. Uh, I want to start by saying that uh, the township has special counsel dealing with the affordable housing litigation. I defer to Mr. Cantor on those issues. I am involved in it to some extent because I, my responsibility in connection with that matter is to uh, draft, negotiate, the agreement with RPM for the construction of the units uh, at the nine Main Street site. So in that regard, I have general, uh, maybe even more specific knowledge of what's going on in this matter. And I want to address the question of the why the rush. The rush results from the fact, if you call it a rush, that, the, that a long time ago, before I sat here, I wasn't involved in it, the settlement agreement was signed, approved and signed. It required that the township do a number of things. One of them is this overlay that will be explained by Mr. Petto. There are many other things that the settlement agreement required be done. One of them is the one I talked about that I'm involved in, which is the 
negotiation of the agreement for the construction of the project. The settlement agreement provided dates that have long, long passed. So the reason for the movement here is because there is a compliance hearing coming up. That's a compliance hearing is exactly what it sounds like. It's a, an effort by the court to make sure that the township has complied with all the terms of the settlement agreement. We are attempting to do that by adopting this ordinance. So that's the reason for the timing. And I want to address the issue that has come up repeatedly with respect to whether there has been a violation of law as a result of the approval of the settlement agreement before the public had an opportunity to comment on it. And I'll say point blank from this seat, no, it's not a violation of the law. It's perfectly appropriate what was done in the past with respect to the, <coughs> appro to the approval of the uh, settlement agreement. I had the uh, opportunity today to review another case. Thank you, Mr. Feld. That was a New Jersey Supreme Court case that was offered uh, presumably in support of the argument that the settlement agreement should have been provided to the public for comment before it was approved. That case involving Cumberland County did not say that. It was an Oprah case. It was a, it's a case that said that once the settlement agreement in that situation was adopted, that it had to be provided through the Oprah process. It didn't say anything about the need to have a, a available to the public prior to the adoption of the settlement agreement. So there's no law that requires that there be public comment before the adoption of a resolution. There is quite the, uh, to the contrary, there is law that requires uh, that there be public comment and notice before the adoption of an ordinance. And that's why we have a first reading and a second reading. The statute requires that there be two opportunities to inform the public about something significant that is about to happen, the change in an ordinance. So there must be a reading at one meeting, and we, we did that tonight with respect to a couple of ordinances that are now going, have been, have been noticed to the public that there will be a public hearing on April 4th in the case of the ones that were handled here tonight. There will be public notices that will be printed in the newspapers for all to read. And there is a requirement of, in, in some situations that there be other notice. Those are the minimum notices that are required by the law. They are required in advance of the adoption of ordinances. They are not required in the advance of adoption of resolutions. The settlement agreement was approved by resolution. There's no law that requires that that be, that that be provided to the public before the vote. There is law that it be provided to the public after the vote, and it has been. It's, the settlement agreement is available. So I, I want to dispel that, that notion. I don't have to consult 40 lawyers about that. Uh, I can tell you as I sit here right now, that's my opinion. Thank you, Mr. Marazzini. Well, so, excuse me, sir, excuse me. So what people who have come in for the first time, I understand what you're going through. And this is not just the second time this has come through. This has come in here last year as well. So you have to understand all five of us who are sitting in here, they're also the resident of the same township. We are resident first, elected official laughter. It is equally going to disturb us as well. Whatever you're feeling, we are feeling the same. I have two kids. One is in the middle school, one is in the high school. And what this is, and I will actually put Mr. Pedo also you know, on the spot if, if you're up to it. This is a affordable housing situation where township should have done for a very long time. I, I think what, 25, 35 years, long time. long time. We have not done anything about it. 
Then we started getting Upton who came in to sue us and that, that's how they were able to get the building the way they had it. Okay. Let's get the facts. Can I, can I finish there first? Mr. Marazidi, since they're saying that they were not coming here to sue us, let me rephrase that and you correct me. I don't want them to tell what I'm saying wrong. You can correct me, please. I was not involved in uh, <laughs> that transaction. I don't have any information. Right. But there's a builder's remedy lawsuit that they were trying to get in and state allows them to. If there's anything that needs to change in the legislation, the state side, township is just following the compliance that was approved by all five TC members last year or a year before that. So Mr. Pedro, if you want to just tell an overall what the settlement agreement was in short, sure. so they all know they come here for the first time. Yes, absolutely. Sure. And loudly. Okay. okay. Why don't you uh, explain when you got involved in the process first? Mr. Felt, if you could please be quiet and hear Mr. Pedro out, that'll be wonderful. He wasn't involved in the settlement process. Good evening, Deputy Mayor, uh, members of the Township Committee, Graham Pedro, uh, Principal of Topology, serving as Township Planner. Um, so uh, I'll kind of step back and, and go back to the original settlement agreement just to kind of give the broad overview of the ordinance that's pending before you this evening. Um, the August 2021 settlement agreement between the Township and Fair Share Housing Center, uh, settlement term number nine uh, states that the Township and Fair Share agree to place overlay zoning on the following properties at the prescribed residential densities requiring a 20% set aside. And one of those subsections notes the Canoeber Country Club as one of those properties. Um, and it's at this site that in the settlement agreement, it details that the overlay zone will be placed atop this property at a density of eight dwelling units per acre, and that the parties, parties agree that this 129 acre parcel may be developed with up to 50% age restricted housing um, as to both the market rate and affordable units. So that's what's permitted under the draft ordinance that's before you this evening. Um, second to that, I just wanted to mention, as Mr. Marazzini highlighted, settlement term number 18 within the adopted settlement agreement requires that the township adopt these ordinances implementing the settlement agreement and implementing all these terms. Um, and to Mr. Marazzini's point regarding the dates, uh, the date that's in the settlement agreement from August 2021 was within 120 days. We're obviously well beyond that, um, and hence the need to move forward. Um, the planning board subsequent uh, to the settlement agreement adopted the housing element and fair share plan on July 20th of 2022, which was last summer. Um, the Canoebrook overlay um, that's contemplated by this ordinance uh, and the settlement agreement was identified as RMF AH5 in that uh, housing element fair, fair share plan document that was adopted by the planning board. Um, and it is detailed uh, extensively on page 24 of the housing element and fair share plan that was adopted by the planning board last summer. As part of this ordinance adoption process, following the first reading, um, this ordinance was sent to the planning board for a master plan consistency review as required by the municipal land use law. Um, the uh, planning board met and reviewed this ordinance uh, on Wednesday last week. I was here with them to review this ordinance. Um, and given that the um, overlay zone is identified in the housing element fair share plan, um, they found that the ordinance as presented is not inconsistent with the master plan and that it follows the master plan um, as planned for this site. Um, regarding the ordinance uh, in particular, I, there's a couple of key points that I want to highlight. Um, the ordinance is applicable only to the Canoeber Country Club property, uh, this lot, which is about 128.9 acres in size. Um, the ordinance before you requires that any development uh, under this housing provision has to have a minimum tract area of 100 acres. Effectively, you know, the entire country club would need to vacate the property. Um, they could not function on the remaining 29 acres uh, in size. Um, the eight dwelling units per acre be permitted uh, in a multifamily apartment style de development. Um, and a maximum building size of about 50,000 square feet, which is roughly uh, 40 to 50 apartments per building. Uh, couldn't have one giant building, it would have to be interspersed in smaller buildings. And just so you know, this, this uh, golf course is not out of business. Right. It is just a zoning laydown that we are providing as the part of settlement. Mr. Moman and Mr. Petter, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Moman, if you could just show. Can I can I just yes. add a couple points to this? Um, one is I think it's been expressed in the past that that the overlay zone um, is an opportunity 
for affordable housing to be built or actually, you know, end market rate housing, but with an affordable component as, uh, as, as described in the ordinance. So it is not a guarantee. It is not a, it is, it, it may never happen, but it is an opportunity for affordable housing to be built. Um, I think there is a little bit of confusion um, with regard to, uh, and, and Mr. Petto can come in on this. I believe the Canoe Brook Country Club is actually going or looking to go before the zoning board to build a range house for their, for their, for their golf range. Yeah, I um, wearing my, my other. You know, yeah, I think that's the confusion here is that if people receive two notices, they're actually that may adding be, to the Canoe Brook Country I, Club. I think that, that gives you the vitality of it. Part of the part of the confusion, the Canoe Brook Country Club has filed an application to the Zoning Board of Adjustment to construct a new hitting range facility uh, at the Country Club. So they're investing in the property at this time, right. um, and that will be appearing at the board soon. That may be some of the related notice that right. That so that so it's un I think it's unfortunate that both both notices were probably received very close to each other. One saying we're building something, and one saying this. And so so they are building something. It is a range uh, house, and then and then the uh, the overlay is again. A zoning mechanism to provide an opportunity for affordable. That's great. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Pedro. One last thing I would actually do is in here for the benefit of who has come here for the first time or who don't know. There is a website on our Melbourne Township a page is dedicated to fair share housing. And if you want to know the detail about what the agreement is, if you want to read anything on it, it is on our website. And Mr. Momin is showing us where it is. So it's it's in the on the home page. Go ahead, Mr. Mo. Under our community affordable housing information. And there is um, actually all the documents that are related to affordable housing. It breaks down the properties um, that are being built on. It also has an FAQ section. Um, and uh, and certainly uh, I think it also has videos of the past information sessions that we've had. Um, and so there's a plethora of information here for residents um, that may be unfamiliar with what has occurred. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Moman. I move this public. I would, I would like an opportunity to say Please. something. I just think that we as a township need to acknowledge that we can do better because there are people showing up that have no idea so we have, we've had a forum, we've talked about this, obviously, through all the meetings, but having that information, I think that we need to, like, not just be like, well, they should have known, like, we need to figure out, all right, there's a subset of the population in this town that we're not reaching in the ways that we're trying to reach them currently, so what are we going to do about it, and how are we going to access people who aren't getting the information in the current way that we're providing it. And so I think that um, we can do better and that and we need to figure out how to do that. Thank you, Ms. Grupus. I think point well made. Um, there's all this room for improvement and on communication side, we can figure out some more ways to improve. Uh, I move that this public hearing be closed and the ordinance be adopted in the final reading and that the township clerk be directed to publish the ordinance by title as passed on final reading in accordance with law. Can I ask for a second? Roll call vote, please. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Prupis? No. Ms. Romano? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vinayak? Yes. Thank you. We'll take a five minute break.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We're off to old business. In old business, we are going to discuss the um, recreation fields feasibility study. Mr. Petto, would you like to step up? And uh, Ms. Romano came up with uh, a wonderful idea. Do you want to speak to that, Ms. Romano? Thank you. Please, can we just talk about how we revisit the master plan? Sure, sure. Um, once again, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Frequent guest here. <laughs> uh, Grant Petto with Principal of Topology serving as the Township Planner. Um, good evening to the Mayor and Township Committee. Um, so, you know, I've been following uh, the, the recreation, um, you know, issues and, you know, assisting in, in some mapping exercises for uh, Mr. McDonald. Um, and, you know, I think one of the things that the Township should consider and think about um, as, uh, you know, was identified is that the current recreation open space master plan element uh, of your township master plan, um, which is the document that defines uh, recreation needs, uh, recreation opportunities, um, availability of, of lands to conduct recreation thereupon. Um, that document was adopted by uh, your township planning board on February 27th of 1991. Oh, that's um, safe to say that February 27th, 1991 is the current in effect recreation and open space uh, element of your master plan. Um, and I, I've, I've been reviewing the master plan in detail and I wanted to highlight this one section, which I thought was very pertinent um, from the 1991 plan. There's a needs assessment section of this master plan element. And it says the following, active recreation is adequate based on the land area standards, but deficient township wide by 14.5 acres based on population. But again, this is the 1991 plan. Uh, passive recreation is below acceptable standards by 3.8 acres based on land area and 40.5 acres based on population. For both active and passive needs, the population-based shortfall is used because it reflects the higher density of existing development and the need to identify areas which can be reserved for future public recreation purposes. So I think it's important um, for you all to see that, you know, even back in 1991, there was this issue, you know, that, that the community was struggling with and the township was struggling with. Um, and, you know, since then, in a series of planning documents, um, your 2018 master plan reexamination, Objective 1.04 noted um, that the township should really provide areas for recreation to serve the needs of all age groups, including indoor and outdoor facilities, as well as active and passive recreational opportunities. Um, so I think throughout your planning documents over the years, um, this has been identified as a need, uh, something to be, re to be addressed. Um, the, an, an update to your open space and recreation master plan uh, can provide great opportunities for the community. Um, there can be surveys that are done as part of that process to identify needs, uh, have community conversations around you know, what's needed for youth, what's needed for seniors, what's needed for all different constituent groups uh, as they choose to recreate here in the community. Um, they can also do that detailed inventory of availability of lands, uh, township owned assets, um, other municipal or other governmental owned assets within the community where there's potential opportunity for lease agreements or purchase agreements or other things. Um, and really have that, that robust conversation to talk about diversity of needs um, and how the township can effectuate those different needs. Um, it can also make programmatic recommendations as far as recreation staffing offerings, you know, those types of things. Um, and it really can lay out a, a framework um, for the township to move forward and prioritize uh, lands for development or recreation opportunities for development. One of the other nice benefits of having an updated element to your master plan in this regard is um, when grant opportunities or funding opportunities come along, you have a, a roadmap to effectuate those um, and you have a plan in place to kind of identify those opportunities and say, oh, our priority number one was, you know, this type of uh, opportunity, here's a grant for that, we can just put this all together and package up that application nicely. Um, so I think it's an important uh, first step um, for you all to kind of have this conversation township wide as far as recreation and open space goes. Um, and then I think from there, that's where you can start to identify the, the best approach to move forward. So I just wanted to raise that, um, you know, the, the your existing element, uh, you know, is, is data that's it's very old. So the planning board does this or we just so the, the planning board is the um, ultimate adopter of a plan element. Um, you know, the drafting of a plan um, can be done, um, you know, elsewhere within the, within the community. 
um, I would recommend that planning board members do participate in the process as they will be the ones to carry it up a finish line. But um, you know, it's typical in most communities when they undertake a master plan update process to set up a steering committee. Um, uh, you know, in this case, you probably want somebody from the Recreation Commission, Rec Department, um, planning board, board of members, Ed. Board of Ed, board probably. Of Ed. Yep. So, engineering. Engineering, yes. Environmental. So, yep. Mm -hmm. Um, to, a planner. <laughs> <laughs> to sit down and, and talk about these issues and identify strategies and how to message it to the public um, and how to solicit that feedback and get that input on the process as well. So do you think somebody in zoning? Could certainly have somebody in zoning. How long is this process? Um, I think it kind of depends on the size and scope of the project that you're looking to do. Um, you know, I think that you want to ensure that you do have robust community outreach. Um, I think in this case, um, you, you know, some online component, of course, is great, um, but I do think that having some of that on the ground uh, touch points are, are a good opportunity too. you know, there's a lot of we're heading into spring season for rec, you know, there's a lot of parents standing on sidelines. <laughs> I'm, I'll be one of them <laughs> in a few weeks. Um, you know, that that's a great time to have these conversations. So, um, you know, I think probably I would say, you know, four, three to four, maybe five months total uh, process time. Um, you want to make sure you have sufficient time to, to receive that feedback and input um, and then also develop the plan as it goes forward. Yeah, that makes sense. So it would be almost similar to if you do the same type of outreach we did last week with the recreation department. Um, but you would have more of those, I would assume, more of those types of outreach in addition to, are you saying something online? Well, I or? think, you know, I, I, it sounds to me, and I was not in attendance last Thursday, but it sounds like it was a very robust conversation. So I think that some of the, the comments are already starting to populate the community discourse. And I think that we can start to distill those down. You know, Mr. McDonald and his staff have, have been there. They've heard some of those things and having them participate in the steering committee would certainly bring some of those comments and uh, uh, perspectives to light. But I also think, you know, again, a few years ago, we had done the downtown vision plan and that was a you know, although a lot of it was done virtually, like, mm -hmm. but that's the type of process I would think is, is, yes, is, mm -hmm. is like this. That's correct. Any close ideas? So what are the next steps for us then, Graham, if this is something, I mean, I guess we should see if there's consensus from the township committee, if this is something, I'm sure there's a cost associated with it. Is this something that, this, it sounds like a nice long-term range plan. It hasn't been done since 91. The Historic Preservation Committee is in the midst of doing this. That's correct. There are elements of the master plan. There are elements of the master plan. That hasn't been done since 91 either. Mm -hmm. And there will be an outreach component of that as well. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think it's a start. You know, I think this is a great start. And then they'll approach it this way and then just see where we go. Sanji, Mr. So Anna. it's a great start to have overall long term. But what about the fields that we have? Can we source that to the fields? like we discussed two years ago. At least can we move that along? I wonder if we, if we, if it means that we wait another three months, I probably think I'd rather wait the three months or four months till we get it rock solid and then we can go right into it. Cause then you can almost look to get shovel ready projects, right? Mm -hmm. That could be grant funded. I like grant funding, Sanji. So what is the, that three month process, you make a team first or steering committee? So, you know, I think that the township committee would kind of create or establish the steering committee group. Um, and then, you know, the the planning process would begin and then a planning team would move forward and develop a plan um, in consultation with the steering committee to kind of do that vetting, make sure that we're um, soliciting the feedback and incorporating survey comments and all those things. So you kind of have your public outreach component, then you kind of take those, sit down with the steering committee and start to develop the framework for the plan. Um, and then there's, you know, follow up public session and then the public hearing for the plan. So we're in the beginning of March. When do you think this will end to really bring the field in play? Estimated timeline. Next spring. Right? <laughs> like there's not gonna be a field at this point. Like if we go through this whole process, yeah. the realistic of it, like getting shovel on the ground is probably next spring in a year. Well, that's where I want to, while this is going on, if that is truly next spring or this fall as well, whatever that is, if we can dedicate some of the fields towards the, we've been waiting for 20 years now, or since 91. What but, field, wait, wait, Sanjeev, are you talking about re-turfing existing fields or are you talking about the field at JFK? What, what field? JFK you... field is one that we all agreed on last year. And we, we said that that is going to be the way it is. We'll use that left side on the field. 
right side for the DPW, Seoul Dome. Why are we stopping there? If DPW entirely moves there sometime later down the line, well, that is later down the line. Right now, DPW's thing is already planned for. We can use that field. It could be grass field, it could be lights in there, whatever that is, at least we can give that. Old Shortest Park, again, that we can use now with the parking lot in there. But if you want to do Old Shortest Park in the planning phase, at least we have this field. Can, can I just, the, the one thing I would say, and I'm not gonna comment on any of, uh, uh, but, but is that the conversations that we are looking to have with the Board of Ed, I think could be done in parallel. Those are fields that are already existing um, that if there's a desire or the ability to get together and turf something and provide additional usage, um, we should certainly do that in parallel with this. But tell me this, you're saying turf something that you're talking about the field behind the high school. Yes, or any one of the- elements. Yeah, we don't even need to turf when these guys asked for cricket in Glenwood, this wasn't even turfing. They could have done it in the back of high school too. So there's no turf required. Can we make a pitch there? Well, that's Just a taking up the conversation those to have with the Board of Ed that I think should be picked right. up. Right, so I'm saying is there is no turf needed for some of the requirements that right. are being looked into could be done without turfing. But that's a conversation that should happen like right now. Softball, with we don't need to turf it. We can just play without turfing. Baseball, we can play without turfing. So the thing is, we don't have field. If we can give that field without turfing, let's start there. I think I think we do have some fields. It's just we weren't given access to them. And I think that that should be another conversation with the Board of Ethics. That's what I think happened. I think they didn't get... Well, part of it is the ability to access them for longer periods of time. So both turf and lighting allow you to use fields longer. Now, deciding what use it is in terms of you know, whether you need grass or not, or turf or not. Again, that's all part of the conversation. But I think that, again, some of the some of the comments that we heard in wanting to speak to the Board of Ed and have those have that uh, that that uh, those conversations is, you know, is there a way for us to get more use out of those fields? Because was on the joint fields. I am. So, okay. And we tried this. I think it's, but maybe we could try, maybe you could try, try it again, again now yeah, that there's yeah, more awareness it. of it. Yes. Yeah, yes. I think it's worth so trying it again. And, or maybe even like having a, a larger, bringing another committee member with you or just, you know. There were two members before and both of us tried. Yeah. So, but, so we are looking to have that conversation both um, with, with, with Mr. Vinayak and uh, Ms. Romano uh, as the Board of Ed Liaison. And so, so we are actively Great. setting it. I also think they were represented at last Thursday mm -hmm. and now they are aware, not, they're aware. much more aware mm -hmm. of where, where, where mm -hmm. the people in the town stand. And so if it hadn't worked in the past, maybe, it, maybe it'll work more likely now. And, and I just want to clarify that everyone there was more against part three and we are, up again, I'm saying we have the field that we can use. Even Board of Ed says yes or no without destroying part three or without doing anything on the part three. So that's where my, my comment here is, let's make use of those fields if, we already if, have. If so if have, Board of Ed says no, we have something already. I'm just hoping they won't say no, given they saw what that meeting was like last Thursday. Wait, but what do we have already? Other than- JFK have, Expressway and we, we have- don't have JFK. Have 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 well, we are, we are doing leaf compost there. We can certainly have a field there. But right now we're having Alex just went out to bid or well, that is on the right side. Yeah, yeah, but there's there's more again, there's more work than just build a field. Like it's there's a lot of organic material there. Like you need to make sure that it's stabilized. There's parking, how are people getting in and out of the site? So I, I'm not disagreeing with anything, but again, and as I said this on Thursday night, is that there are limitations and constraints to anything we look at in this town. And so that's part of the idea behind this. Um, the one thing that doesn't have that is the Board of Ed field. They're already there, right? If we could have that conversation and, and do something there, whether it is grass and things like that, uh, that's, no, that's I, all I'm saying. I know what you're saying. Mr. Hogan had done that homework for that field and came up with where the wetland was. He wouldn't make the field. It was all done. That work was preliminary done. We, yeah, we so, drew the picture and we drew where the, where the parking would be. 
Right. And, and the thing was, we were not touching the wet lab. We were also thinking of putting a cell tower there. Again, if the, the necessity has changed, we can change that. But there was the combination of DPW, pork, and the field both together. I, well, uh, one, I other thing, if, uh, one other thing I just want to be aware of that this process like is going to go through the summer so it's definitely going to be longer even if we start it now taking into account summer and summer vacation and people being out and mm -hmm. that it, it it's going to be a little bit long I think it's going to end up being a little bit longer certainly yeah I think you would want to you obviously sure. want to prioritize public input at the beginning of the process so if we were able to start quickly you know we'd have the benefit of the, you know, the balance of this school year um to do that so public that outreach thing. before the town mm -hmm. empties out before in summer we have right. a couple of months that we mm -hmm. can yeah all right, so yeah. we can, I, I'm in favor of, of doing that element, of getting element. it done. Yeah, I am too. You're in favor? Yes. You're in favor? You're in favor? Okay, we're in favor. So that's great. So we send out the volunteer interest form now for steering committee? I think what you, I, and Mr. Petto, maybe you can speak to this for a second. <laughs> in the past, if you've ever done this with other communities, who typically would be on the steering committee? Or you've seen. Yeah, I mean, I think in this case, you know, I did start to mention, you know, I think you want some planning board representation. I think you want some rec commission representation. I think you do want some municipal employee rep uh, representation. The uh, probably the engineer. Um, Environmental Commission, yes, because it's recreation and passive open space as well. So, um, I yeah, think we should have different generations as well, different ages, yes, and different mm -hmm. activities, and making mm -hmm. sure we have a broad spectrum of who yes. uses the fields. Mm -hmm. Right. So we have different people in rec committee already. Some are in baseball, some are in soccer, some are in football. Mm -hmm. We can get those people, and instead of having residential, then we just pick people up from the rec committee, we pick people planning? up from planning board, and if we can, some high schoolers. Yeah. We'll have a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that would be good. Provide some framework for I hear some murmuring of the residents, just to remind them committee members are residents too. Board members are residents too. So are we, um, is there going to be a resolution for, a, or will there yeah. be a contract? Yeah. Yes, that, yes. Uh, it would be very similar to what you just, uh, what, what was put on tonight for the, so, um, you know, we would ask for um, a, a proposal with regard to this Great. process. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have no other old business and we have no new business listed. May I have second? Motion. Motion. Second. 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 Second